I'm just coming into Ehrenberg, Arizona here. Ehrenberg is a popular spot with nomads, uh, snowbirds during the winter months. Um, it's not too far from Quartzsite, about, uh, oh gosh, 16 to uh, 18 miles, depending on which exit you're measuring from. Uh, Ehrenberg's an exit one off of I-10, right on the California border. You can actually see it in the California from parts of Ehrenberg. And yeah, this is the road to go. This is Ehrenberg Parker Highway I'm coming in on. I'm just coming down from Parker. And as you can guess from the name of the road, this highway connects Ehrenberg and Parker. Uh, Parker is roughly 40 miles north of here. One of the things about Ehrenberg is that uh, it's, there's fewer people here uh, than in Quartzsite. It tends to be a lot less crowded. You, you can find places in Ehrenberg that are crowded. You can find places usually in Quartzsite that are not crowded. But on average, You'll find a lot fewer people here in uh, Ehrenberg than in Quartzsite, which if you're like me and you like to have some peace and quiet and privacy while you're camping, that gives you a better option. Um, like in Quartzsite, there are a lot of ATVs over here, some places more so than others. But not a lot here. Um, there is a family dollar here now. This is just opened, uh, I think, a year, maybe two years ago. That's pretty new, uh, but it's nice to have the option for... Uh, Pick up some basic supplies. Here on the right here, um, this is the Ehrenberg Mini Mart. And this is a, a you know, popular spot with nomads, kind of a must-know destination. And there's a few reasons for that. And it includes that the Mini Mart here has uh, some basic general store type supplies, but it also has uh, a laundromat and they have showers that are fairly inexpensive and uh, they, have, they have a water machine out front. You can fill your water, firewood. But they also have uh, mailboxes here, which you can rent for just a short time or for uh, annual. I actually have an annual box here, and it's really convenient because uh, I can get packages delivered here and regular mail while I'm down in the area. But I can also, uh, because I have it annually and it's, it's a permanent box, I can, when I'm coming down in the, in the fall, I can actually get stuff sent here ahead, knowing that I'll be here shortly to pick it up. So that's pretty uh, convenient option right there and so stopping to say hello to mark when you're in the area and he's a great guy and like i said this is a must know stop for Ehrenberg. so just up the hill here which we'll see as soon as this little bus moves um <laughs> that's interstate 10 crossing over there and that's the ramps on and off are right on the top of this little hill in front of us and if you go on down the road this way there are a few rv parks down there if you're looking for that kind of thing We head up the hill here, there's a new 76 station on the right that I'll show you. And this is my recommended place to get gas here. Uh, you definitely want to get gas here before you go into California if you're heading west because it's obviously quite a bit more expensive in California. Uh, this station is new as well. It opened, uh, I think, just a year or two ago. Uh, but it's got a big parking lot and, you know, kind of a, call it a travel center. So there's a, you know, pretty good sized convenience store in there. So you just turn down on the north frontage road here, which is right next to the freeway ramps. And this is a good spot to get gas. There is a Flying J across the way here, the other side of the interstate. I don't go there anymore since this place opened because the Flying J is always so crowded and kind of dirty. This place is pretty clean, so I like this better than a Flying J. Alright, so I've got some gas back on the road now. Bumped into a viewer there at the gas station, which is always fun. Uh, when you pull out here, and he was off the frontage road, you see right here are the uh, highway ramps for I-10. And if you are going west into California, they do stop you at an agricultural check booth and ask you if you have any produce or house plants that they may actually seize on the border uh, to protect their uh, crops over there from infiltration so uh, this white car coming on here is coming on from the uh, off-ramp off of i-10 eastbound oh we got quite a fire cooking over there in the distance you guys see that wow i'm not sure where that's at exactly 
I'll show you over here on the uh, south frontage road. Here's the Flying J, and and I, again, I was just talking with uh, somebody over there at the the 76 about how not only is this place always crowded, it's really trashed, and it's just not as clean or nice as the 76. So I recommend the 76, but I shouldn't say that on video probably because if everybody goes there, it'll end up looking like the Flying J here. So, but uh, <laughs> anyway. I'll show you there's a few camp places you can camp around here that are that are pretty uh, BLM free camping and so I'll show you where the one is down here on the river and then uh, there's another couple spots that I'll point out but I have actually have whole videos on those so I'll just link to those videos sure that's you're gonna turn right just past this truck tire shop uh, on Oxbow Road it's this Ehrenberg and Oxbow River Road access sign and this is where you're gonna turn this gravel and it's not actually too far down here the catch with the river is it can be busy and it can be pretty buggy certain times of the year too so we'll uh, do a quick ride down and show you it's not hard to find once you know where it's at but if you don't know it's here you might not ever guess your way down to it this road's a little bumpy but it's not bad I mean you can you know any any rig is gonna be able to make it down here without a problem so Ooh, speaking of bumps one thing I've noticed with a high top van is that uh, when you get any of that rocking back and forth, you really rock. Especially your stuff up high on the top shelves tends to tends to sway a bit more than it would in like a minivan or something. So. All right, you can make a right hand turn here. It's, it's the first right, and it's right across from this uh, natural gas pipeline place. They got it harvested now, all now, but last time I was down here, these are actually cotton fields, and you could actually see uh, the cotton plants were all still there last time I was here, so uh, that's kind of cool. I was, I was surprised the first time I came down to uh, this area along the Colorado River Valley, there's a fair number of uh, cotton fields. And there's a natural gas plant over here. We're gonna go past all this, and just ahead of us is the uh, Colorado River and the mountains in the distance are actually over in California. That fire over there is still cooking pretty good. Apologies for the camera shake here. It's a little bit rough ride. Um, it's not like I said, it's not it's not like a bad road, it's just a little little uh, bouncy so <laughs> I'm probably some of that'll probably show up in the camera. Last time I was down here, it was, it was packed. I mean, I was going to camp down here uh, a month or two ago. I don't remember when I first got down here in the fall this year, and it was pretty packed. There wasn't anywhere to park. So we'll see how it looks today. But in any case, I'm heading over to Quartzsite for some work after this anyway, so it won't really matter. But yeah, and in the years past, I've never seen people camp in this little uh, turnaround here when you first come in. Uh, but are this year so actually not as bad as last time I was here but you see the river right over there because these folks are getting to park right on the Colorado River and this road here it parallels the river and it just goes down for a ways probably a couple miles um, it does as far as I'm aware dead end I'm pretty sure it dead ends last time I was down here I made it down a little ways and then uh, there was a big RV parked at the end of the road. Well, I'm assuming it was the end of the road, so uh, I can't go past that. But, so it goes a little ways. I'm just going to turn around here. Uh, I, have, I do have a full campsite review uh, written up on this location with coordinates and everything, so I'll put that in the video description. But I, I don't have, I think I've done a video on this before, so I want to show it this time. Uh, there are a couple other spots I'll show you, and I have videos on the other two and I also have camp written campsite reviews on those as well so I'll have links to everything in the video description if you want to learn more about where to camp here and uh, Deborah has also done an interview with Mark showing off the laundromat the mini mall there so I will also make a point of putting that link in the video description as well if you want to check out more details and see the inside of the mini mall. Alright so back on pavement on the uh, south frontage road here and 
coming up on the fly and Jay again. I'll show you where the how you had to get to the hopefully this truck stops. I'll show you where how you get to the uh, uh, the main the most popular camping area over here in Ehrenberg. That's up on Ehrenberg Cibolo Road. That's just the other side of this roundabout. Again, it's pretty easy to access, but if you didn't know it was there, you might not find it on accident uh, unless you were out with, with uh, you know, your maps looking for BLM land and stuff. That's actually how I find a lot of spots, but this one is, is pretty popular. It's been talked about a lot on the internet, so. All right, so instead of going around to the, back to Ehrenberg or to the interstate, we should go out here on this frontage road that says dead end. And it's paved for a little bit and then turns to uh, gravel. It does, the bottom part is, is you know, generally gets graded periodically. There's a county uh, gravel pit down here. But as you as you go up, it does get pretty rocky. It's, you know, it's accessible by any any vehicle, but it's, it does get rocky. You probably want to take it slow and easy. And right about here, the road starts deteriorating. <laughs> but people do camp down here on the bottom. Um, this is not BLM land down here, but people do camp down here. Um, now I've actually camped down here on the bottom uh, this this year, a little further down. It, it's my understanding is it's a mix of like county and state land, and, and uh, who knows what? I don't know exactly, but that's that's what I've been told. But it's it's not BLM. Uh, but there are some spots you can pull off a camp down here if you want to. There is a fair bit of traffic on this road, so I mean, if you want to get away from the traffic noise, you got to find a spot you can get back a little further. And the cell phone coverage, you'll have AT&T and Verizon both here in uh, uh, Ehrenberg. I can't speak beyond that, but there are spots down here and even up on the on the hill on the BLM land where it's pretty iffy and then spots where it's not bad. If you really want good coverage, you want to go to the, the third spot I'll show you today, which is over at Tom Wells Road. And that's actually line of sight to towers, so you'll have better coverage over there. And that's about, uh, I think, about four miles down I-10. So. All right, here's the end of the pavement. So we're going to go ahead and turn around here and head over to Tom Wells Road. I had another rig out there in the distant class, big class A. Um, so this goes up, and you can say you can camp along this if you want. It's not BLM, but people camp here anyways. And, you know, you get up. A couple miles but i got a full video tour where i actually drove all the way up and showed you where the camping is and with gps coordinates and everything uh, as well as the written up campsite reviews so i'll go ahead and, and uh, post those in the video description if you want to get more details on this all right so i'm going back into the roundabout now coming off of this frontage road and we're going to get on uh, i-10 east and head over to, I'll show you Tom Wells Road. That's pretty much it for Ehrenberg. There's not a lot here for groceries. You're going to have to go over to, there are a couple small grocery stores in Quartzsite, but generally people go over to Blythe. It's only just across the river, like five or ten miles, depending on where you go. And uh, they have an Albertsons and a Smart and Final. Uh, or people go up to Parker, which is like about 40 miles north, and they have a Walmart up there as well as a... Uh, I think a couple of other grocery stores as well. If Walmart's not your thing, well, we're just gonna head a, a few miles down I-10, heading eastbound, and we'll come to the exit for Tom Wells Road, which I guess is technically part an Ehrenberg address still, but it's it's, it's definitely outside of the town. And I should mention too that as far as uh, propane goes, the only place I know of in Ehrenberg that has it is the uh, uh, Fly and J if you need to refill your propane tanks. And as far as trash disposal in Ehrenberg, the Fly and J has some small cans like you find in any gas station. The 76 has, uh, you know, regular small cans like at a gas station. Um, the the mini mall used to allow people to throw stuff in their dumpster, but it was abused to the point that they they've uh, chained up the dumpsters now, so uh, you can't do that anymore, unfortunately. So, and that's what happens, unfortunately, too often is that people abuse things, whether it's you know free trash disposal or free water, and then. You know, it ends up getting shut down for everybody. So if you find a place like that, you know, please be uh, respectful and considerate and, and uh, you know, spread it out so we're not uh, losing it for, for everybody. All right, so we're coming up on Tom Wells Road here. This is at exit five. 
Uh, so it's four miles from the Ehrenberg exit, which is exit one. Uh, and in front of us are the Dome Rock Mountains, and the Dome Rock Mountains divide, are you know, run between Quartzsite and Ehrenberg. There is a truck stop here, that's one thing to note uh, on the left hand side here. So uh, that'd be the north side of the highway, and they usually have pretty good prices. And they also have a, uh, a smoke shop inside there in case you need to get some cigars or something and a Subway restaurant if you're looking for some food. As we get off the uh, Tom Wells Road exit, I'll show you, uh, I'm going to go just south and onto BLM land and there's a, just quite a bit of camping out here as well. This one is super easy to access and it's paved right up to the point you can go into BLM and you can camp, you know, anywhere there. So if you're looking for easy access, this is a good one. And you start seeing rigs out there, out in the desert. There are a couple of cell phone towers over here just behind the truck stop. So you'll you have really good Verizon and AT&T here. Uh, best in Ehrenberg or Quartzsite as far as I'm aware of. So that's, that's worth uh, keeping in mind if you're like me and you're a digital nomad. The one thing here, and I don't camp out here a lot on Tom Wells Road, is because there are a lot of ATVs over here, especially weekends and holidays. But it can get pretty uh, rowdy and noisy, so that's not really my cup of tea. So, um, But I have camped here before. And my experience is if you go further back, you go to worse cell so it'll get some noisier gets with ATVs and things, so you're probably better off uh, staying close to the road if you want a little bit of quieter and uh, you may get some road noise, but you'll have uh, less traffic and stuff. So as you go, you do go through a series. This road is the main road back, and there's a number of uh, offshoots to the sides, but as you go, it goes through a whole series of washes, and they get worse as they go too, so <laughs> you can usually make it through a few of them anyways. Just be aware when you're coming out. Anytime like this, you're going through washes. If there's rain in the forecast, even if it's like the next town over, um, it can flood out pretty bad and it may not be passable until it dries out. And, and sometimes they can get washed out. So it's a heavy rain. So just something to be aware of there. Um, but you can come out here and like I said, there's, there's plenty of camping out here. Just pick your spot. I do have a video about Tom Wells Road here and a, uh, a write up review as well so i'll have links to all that in the description like i said so you can check those out if you want to know more you want gps coordinates um, that kind of thing but now for me i gotta find a place to get turned around here and i need to get over to quartzite uh, i need to be over there in an hour to uh do some work so looks like there's a good spot on the other side of this wash we'll get turned around and uh yeah here you go this one's a little bit we're not bad but a little bit worse you can see where it's, it's starting to wash out on the sides Come out here a few years ago with Deborah. We were in her van hauling a cargo trailer and went through a series of these washes looking for a nice quiet place to camp and uh, started down one too many and boy it was bad but I was already started down in a you know rear wheel drive van hauling a cargo trailer and there was no way I was gonna be able to back out of it so we did manage to make it through and out again but boy that was uh, that was a little bit of an adventure. turned around here and I got to get over to Quartzsite and uh, for some work. I hope this video was helpful if you're coming down to the southwest desert. Uh, you know Quartzsite is a pretty popular spot but Ehrenberg's a great alternative to uh, find more camping options or plenty of camping options that aren't quite as crowded and maybe a better cell signal and, and uh, there's some good amenities over here. Less, cr less traffic for sure so definitely worth uh, checking out I think if you're in the area and you're looking for an alternative to uh, the crowds and the traffic over in Quartzsite, particularly during January when it's so busy over there. So I'm Robert Witham, your Nomad Travel Reporter, and bringing you uh, information about the, the places and the people and, and some of the nitty-gritty how-tos of the traveling lifestyle. Thanks for joining me in this video, everyone.